Hey you guys, welcome to Dresden. So I'm Taylor, I'm a US American and I've been living and working in Germany these past few years and right now it's a weird time, you can't really travel as much but I'm super lucky that we're still able to travel a little bit within Germany and within Europe as well. Like I said, I'm in Dresden, I'm actually only here for a day, like, I don't even know, six hours, if that. So I'm going to take you around and show you the top things to do with a very limited amount of time. We're gonna stay outside for the most part. I think we're only going to go inside one museum, um, one of the art galleries that has a lot of Renaissance portraits and paintings, but I'm going to take you with and show you all of the top places. Dresden is a very historical city, but at the same time, it was pretty much completely destroyed in the Second World War. There was a bombing campaign from the British and American forces at the very end of the war in February 1945, and it pretty much destroyed all of the city. It was actually a very controversial bomb bombing. Research still suggests that the bombings weren't completely necessary. Um, the American forces said that it was necessary because there were a lot of factories here and it was like a transportation hub, but at the same time, they didn't really bomb many bridges or factories that were outside the city. They primarily bombed the city center and around 25,000 civilians were killed during these bombings in Dresden. And after the war, everything was completely built back up. Um, Dresden is known for its Baroque architectural style and Rococo architectural style. And you'll still see that because things were built in the original style that the buildings were already in before the war. Um, but it's it's important to know that these are all kind of new, new rebuilt buildings. So I'm very excited to take you around. We're going to go to the Frauenkirche. We're going to go to the Residenzschloss. We're going to go um, to the Opera House, um, see some beautiful views over the city. And I'm excited to take you guys with me. All right, so warm. Here we go. Our first stop of the day is Brühl's Terrace. This is a great place to start because you have a view of the boardwalk and the Baroque architecture of some of the city's most loved buildings right above the River Elba. This is a great place to grab a coffee, do some people watching, and it's kind of the entry point to the old city or the Altstadt. Just a short walk away from Pruls Terrace, where we just were, is a plaza where you can find the Frauenkirche. It was actually built originally in the 18th century, but like most of the historical buildings in the city of Dresden, it was destroyed during the bombing of World War II. And it wasn't until after the reunification of Germany that the reconstruction of the church actually began. Between the bombing and reunification and rebuilding, the church's remains just laid where they once stood whole and East Germans actually use this location as a gathering site for uh, their civil rights movement. The church is free to go into. I would really suggest doing this. I've been in many churches and cathedrals and I'm not myself religious, but I found the altar in the Dresden Frauenkirche to be extraordinarily beautiful. Uh, the interior is made of marble and it has these light and bright pastel colors and it almost felt reminiscent of like being in the clouds. Like I said, we only had one day, even less than that, to discover the city, so we only decided to go inside one museum. There are many museums in Dresden. You can go to the Green Vault or the Zwinger, but I'm a big fan of art and there's one art museum called the Gemälde Galerie Alte Meister. This museum has pieces from the 15th to the 18th century and it includes artwork from the Italian Renaissance, but also from well-known Dutch and German painters such as Rembrandt, Vermeer, and Van Eyck. Uh, the most famous painting though, and the shining star of the museum, is definitely the Sistine Madonna, uh, painted by Raphael after being commissioned in 1512. And the two small angels at the bottom are definitely iconic symbols of uh, Renaissance paintings. If you just head right outside of this art museum, you'll be right in front of the Zemper Oper, which is their opera house. Funny story, I've never actually been to an opera. Uh, I've been to other musicals and orchestra concerts and things like that, but never to an actual opera. And we didn't even go inside and they're obviously not holding shows right now because of coronavirus, maybe next time. But um, this opera house is best known for being the location where renowned artists such as Wagner and Strauss would debut their major work. So there's a lot of historical significance behind it. Just a small walk away, you also have something called the Fürstenzug. This is probably the highlight of my trip. It was so amazing. It's a mural 
over 100 meters long, made of over 23,000 porcelain tiles. And the mural depicts 35 different leaders over a 800 year period rule of the House of Wetton. And they have electors, dukes, and kings that belong to Saxony's ruling family. And before this porcelain mural was put in place and commissioned in 1904, there was actually a fresco underneath it. Um, but these murals actually survived the World War II bombing. It's one of the only things like of historical significance that really survived. Uh, along with all of these rulers of Saxony, they also had some common people, in quotation marks, uh, farmers, artisans, children, you can see that. And another cool thing is all the people are depicted in contemporary garb from their time period. So you can see the, the outfits changing over time and the style changing. If you cross over the Augustus Bridge towards the Neustadt, you'll get a really nice view of the skyline of Dresden. Unfortunately, it was under a lot of construction when we were there, and you'll probably see this in the videos as well. After you cross the bridge, you will also find an iconic statue of Augustus the Strong, who held many titles including the Elector of Saxony, the King of Poland, and the Grand Duke of Lithuania in the early 19th century. August the Strong definitely lived up to his name. He liked to prove his strength by breaking horseshoes with his hands and his <clears throat> virility by fathering 11 children from multiple women. He is probably best remembered though for his affinity for the arts as he sponsored the development of mice and porcelain, which is still produced today. Uh, he was an avid art collector, and his art can be found in many museums throughout the city, and he oversaw the construction of lavish palaces. Finally, on our way back to our parked car, we went to grab food and took a walk through the Neustadt. Uh, the new city is definitely the most hip place, I would say. A ton of young people, young families, very diverse uh, for Eastern Germany's standards. <laughs> and we decided to go for a small walk through the Kunsthof Passage. If you have time, I would really consider doing this. It's like day and night between the Altstadt and the Neustadt of Dresden. But the Kunsthof Passage, Kunst in German is art, and this alleyway, it makes sense that it's called this because when you walk through the passage, the buildings themselves are artwork. They're brightly painted, they have creative facades, they're statues um, and fountains in, in the, passage and it's so it's so cool and so beautiful there's also a ton of small boutiques and cafes you can grab a coffee but that's how we ended our day and then we drove to our airbnb hey everyone i just got back to my airbnb i am so exhausted my feet hurt and i got really bad sunburn if you can see it on my shoulders but Dresden was so beautiful it was a lot cleaner than i thought it was going to be and of course we didn't get to go into a lot of places today, but what we could see, we did see from the outside. It was so lovely. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I hope that you guys can also visit the city soon. Uh, hopefully if everything starts to improve in terms of the virus and everything. And I look forward to seeing you guys next week. I'm going to be doing a few hikes in the Sächsische Schweiz, and I hope to be posting those online as well. Okay, don't forget to subscribe. Bye.